the the tool is, is remaining um, horizontal to the horizontal to this face, but then yep. it's moving in and out, following this curve. Right. We're were we actually to be using a profile knife and machining that the tool would need to um, be changing, uh, would, would have to follow that. Um, okay, you want the tool to be normal to that, okay. Exactly, sense. yes, okay. yes, that's right. All right, that's okay, right. all right, makes sense. So what we would need to do here is, um, let me use a different technique in here. So I'm gonna do, um, um, a technique, uh, let's go ahead and, um, so this model here, I'm gonna create an ISO curve, extract ISO curve. I'll pick this uh, surface and I'll use the midpoint right here. And then I'll go continue along. I'm just gonna use this surface as an example here. So let me repeat that. Let me go ahead and um, explode this model in here. So what I'm gonna do is basically pick these surfaces. So I'll use this surface so that the tool will be normal to that surface. Okay. okay. So I'm gonna use this as an example in here. I'll pick these surfaces. So So that would be a five-axis toolpath method. It's called five-axis um, surface. Uh, we can do a five-axis curve projection machining. So let me invert the rest and hide it for now. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and extract a curve. I can pick a curve right here. I can do a duplicate edge. I'll go pick these curve in here. Just pick the bottom edge around the part. Okay, so now what I could do here is I don't need to tilt the coordinate system uh, when we program a simultaneous five axis operation, for example, like a curve projection. We pick the curves to it needs to be projected, so I'll pick this curve. And then for the surfaces, I'm gonna use these surfaces in here. So and then I've got to check the normal orientation. Make sure the normal is pointing in the correct direction. You can see it's all pointing down towards the wrong side. So I'm going to say flip all normals. Okay. So you can see the normals are being flipped. And you can pick a tool for it. Set feeds and speeds and clearance. You can do a planar clearance. And then for the uh, cutting parameters, you can put in a projection distance and uh, generate the pad. So in this particular case, you will notice that the the tool, let me run a simulation, is being normal, and you can see it changes the orientation as you're cutting it. So this is like a simultaneous or a true five axis machining. Right, and, and, that's, and that's what will be necessary. Yep, so this can only be done with standard tool types like flat mills, ball mills, a corner radius tool. You can't use a form tool, but you can actually program it with like a flat mill, and then you can swap it out with any tool that you like. Right, good. Now when I do a simulation in here, you'll see that the tool is being normal to the surface at all times. Yes, the, the only thing is, is that the angle of the tool needs to would, be horizontal. It would want to be horizontal, right. So what we would have to do here is um, we would have to basically pick this edge. I just used that as an example, so it's using the yeah. normal base of this. Mm -hmm. so had I used the normal base of this face, then uh, it would have been parallel to that. So I can, uh, you know, 
do the same here. I'll do a duplicate edge. Um, and I'm going to pick these edges in here. Join them together. And if I go back in here and pick this curve, and I'll go pick the select surface. Let's say I pick these surfaces. So you need to just basically model like a drive surface. Yeah, I see. To be normal too. And now generating this pad. You'll notice that the tool is normal to that, and it's actually flipping the angle because it's uh, right over the edge. So I can move this curve slightly below it and you'll see it basically is normal to that. Okay. So if I take this curve in here uh, and slightly drop it down in the Z, and I can go back and regenerate this now. Yeah, it should. Uh, it's probably flipping that over because the normals is changing right there. But yeah. You yeah. kind of get an idea how it works, right? Yes. Yeah, I, I think that's. I, I understand enough to to be able to. Okay, so that would be a surface normal machining operation. So now, when you post this out, um, yeah, sorry, curve uh, curve projection machining, you can see the A values are changing, and then also it rotates as you're cutting it. See, the C is rotating right there. The C is rotating. Yes. Yep. I see that. Yep. And the Perfect. A stays at 90 degrees. Excellent. Okay. <clears throat> Would that answer your question, sir? It does. Yeah, that that um, okay. that was extremely helpful. So uh, you could use any of these simultaneous five-axis methods for different type of applications, and uh, the type of tools that you can pick on these five-axis simultaneous methods are limited to ball mills, flat mills, corner radius. You can have taper and chamfer tools. So you can okay. create custom or form tools which can be used in like two axis operations like these form tools. I see. Okay. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like me to cover during this demonstration today? Well, that was extremely helpful. I, I think that ultimately um, one question I did have regarding the, um, I believe it's in the machine, um, you, you have, um, excuse my lack of uh, vocabulary, but you have a number of, of machine, simulated machines that are able, you're able to call up and actually, do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, you're uh, referring to what's called a machine tool simulation, uh, which right. we do that by going to like a load from file and then we can pick a machine tool from the list here. Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's what I was discussing. Is is that something which um... we can certainly uh, build and add the machine tool models? So here, this is just for the purpose of uh, visualization here. Yeah, the simulation, as you can see, uh, it's not going to uh, uh, you know provide you any collision with the machine tool or any of those. It's just for just to you know uh, for viewing and make it easier for you to see you know how the tool is tilting as you're cutting it. I see. Okay. It's um, it's probably not necessary. We need to model the machine tool model in here, and then uh, we can add it to the list. So we need the uh, you know the different you know components like the x axis, your z axis, your c, your b axis. So basically, these are all uh, you know converted to an STL file, and then you can save it into this directory, and then you have an XML file which establishes the relation and the kinematics in here. 
how how frequently do you think people use that? I, I would think that that if you're able to simulate the tool accurately, that there isn't a great deal of need to to have the machine on there as yeah, well. So will give you basically uh, it's, it's same as your uh, you know it's like your cut control simulation instead of the tool. Um, you know, it basically shows it with the machine tool instead of just being the cutting tool. It shows it with the machine tool. Yeah. Okay. All right.